you want an outline on there that shows precisely where you can engrave on something. Maybe it's a, a weird shape and you, you've kind of lined it all out. You can make that dotted and it would never engrave and whatever you put into it would fit where you think it's going to go. It's like the text in the box. Like yeah, the box. yeah. That's right, yeah. Kind of like a text box is made up the same way. Do you have, have a vector tray to do all this stuff? You do. Um, you can buy one from Grab a Graph, but we have a cheaper one available, correct? Sorry, Jeff. Yes, we apologize to you guys. Do you, do you know what the cost is offhand? 105. 105. So um, can, uh, ours, is a, ours is kind of a cheapy. It works. It's, uh, it's a little flimsy, so just be delicate with it. The Grab a Graph one is uh, robust, it, it, it's strong, and it has guide rails up on it, so if you want to be really precise with things. Um, the Grab a Graph one is about 500. I'm pretty certain. Okay. 500, and then the the one the other one that we have that's uh, flimsier uh, is 105. But you definitely want a vector tray, and people have made their own kind of homemade stuff. But I would recommend at least getting the one we have. Just just on that point, you know, if you're if you're like, oh, what, you know, am I, would I get my my cost out of this? Um, we sell our little magnets upstairs in our product line for uh, about 4.99 each. And you could get about eight of those in one uh, piece of wood. That's going to cost you two dollars and fifty cents. So your cost of material goes down quite a bit more. Now your time in creating a file is going to go up. You'll have a little more labor into it, but your cost of material will, will go down. And this is precisely about having a little manufacturing shop in your store because you could you could make your own custom magnets, your custom uh, you know the what are those. Uh, uh, round to it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, there you I, go. We are on the level. <laughs> you know, like round to it, things like that. Or, or we give away little saw magnets. Mark uh, demonstrated the uh, the buggy magnets, things like that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jerry. Put some colors in all the wood. Would you would you like spray paint the color and then laser? Will it come off? Yeah. We actually do that quite a bit here. Um, I don't know. Is that available for sale? Not, Not really in the in the line. But I've actually in Walnut Creek. Enough people ask. Yes. Yeah. But at Walnut Creek, I buy spray cans of paint, and I, I spray paint it myself. And that you can do some really really cool stuff with that. Just add some color to the alder. So. All right. Anything else on the uh, the main page here? What does the vector tray actually do? I mean, it just gives it some space, so it's not burning onto your table, or it's so it doesn't bounce back and burn a ceiling, a hole through your ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if Jeff answered that, but as the way I understand it, it dissipates a beam after it goes through, and then it also gives an opportunity to exhaust, you know, top and bottom from the material. Because when you're cutting things out, you're actually pulling a lot more material out of your machine. And if you're not exhausting it, it just gets into gets into everything. Uh, but I'm pretty, I'm, it also breaks up the beam. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't burn. Do you have to sand them? Do you have to sand them when you? No, do? you do not have to sand them. I mean, they just wipe clean. A lot of times there's a little bit of smoke residue right, on them, right. um, but they just wipe clean. You don't with have Windex? to sand them. <laughs> with no, with uh, just water. Just water. Just damp cloth. And and back to the point too about making your own magnets and stuff like that. You're gonna have downtime in your stores right. when you don't have a line at the laser machine. And this gives it, and this is good for two reasons. First of all, you keep the machine running. And like Joe said, you have very little cost involved. Um, but second of all, that creates interest in the machine as well. So when there's a customer coming by, a machine that's running, cutting something out is a lot more attractive than a machine that's setting totally still. Um, and so I think it's a, it's a really good way to use it. Yes. Yes, uh, on, online there is a really good how-to video because if I went too fast on the second time still, you can slow, you can slow the video way down and, and watch, watch it as often as you want. So, um, back, back to the time question. I did six of the magnets and it took me about 10 minutes to run. run okay. Steve is saying he, he made about six magnets and it took about 10 minutes to run. They were, so, they were a three by two magnet. Okay. It took about six minutes. Um, about 10 minutes. So it's it's really not that much time when you're looking at the individual one. And uh, 
What I like to do in my stores is, is maybe not even run a full board of products at the same time, but do like three items and then restart for the next three. That way I'm not tying up the machine um, for starting and stopping and stuff like that. All right, any more questions um, on this page? Well, what was the percentage of business that you did? Was it October? Did you, your laser percentage versus your gross sales? We We've had months in, in uh, Walnut Creek when we've done over 20% of our sales in a 10 by 10 area. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. And we have like a 3,000 square foot store. So do the numbers. Um, it, it is absolutely incredible what you can do. Um, it's really exciting. So. Yes. I'm sorry, this is a little off. That's fine. Uh, the seminar. Tony Evans will do his seminar at 1, okay. and then the 2 o'clock one, on your paper it says it's here, but we're going to do it in the big hall over where uh, Tony Evans is speaking as well, okay? I'll catch you over here if you come if you come this way, but I'm going to send you back the other way. All it is is exercise. So where's the big hall? Where we ate? Uh, by the oh. vendors. By, oh, by the, the, vendor. uh, the other oh. booths. Where all the other seminars were being held. <laughs> all right. Uh, any other questions or, or comments on, on this part? And then you just save that as a file if you want to be... Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you can just save as, set up a new folder. Um, I set my stuff up as a subfolder under the personalized files, uh, but just create it, give it a name, um, and you can absolutely do that so you don't have to set it up every time. Um, all right, anything else on this page? I don't know who's doing the caboose. The, the caboose? Yeah. yeah. I can give classes for that. So. All right, let's move on uh, to this page again. Um, again, we want to set it to autofocus. You want to provide some Z drop. Um, it's pretty important that you, you make sure you're not going to hit your vector tray. What I always do is I drop my, my actual bed before I put the tray in. But we'll set it at one inch. And then also you want to use the wood preset here uh, since we are on Graven Alder. Um, what, is that, what does that mean, uh, wood preset? Do you, Jeff, do you want to explain that? Well, uh, the wood preset? Yeah. Can you show them where it is? Yes, right here. Yeah. That's just, um, we, it's something within Gravis style that we uh, went through and figured out the good settings for how to engrave wood. So you don't need to use it if you don't want to, but it doesn't hurt. Okay. So. You, those right here. Yeah. This is autofocus. If if the autofocus is not set, um, the the laser beam, or the laser optics or whatever is just going to come over and start lasering whatever height it's at. The autofocus will make it come down, contact the material, and come back up to the, the place where it's focused. Um, so you basically all always want to autofocus. You probably got like a little blue or white uh, plastic tube or bar that came, comes with it. If your autofocus wouldn't work at some point or you, um, the little rubber thing that comes down, sometimes that gets bent up or something, you can use that and that's the height between the object and your lens uh, that is the optimal height for the focus. Um, but yeah, we always use the autofocus so it comes over. This just enables the tray to drop. Um, so if we have this highlighted, there's no X on this, okay. the tray's going to drop whatever amount that we put in here. So you can put in a half an inch, you can put in two inches. What do you mean the tray's going to drop? Um, the floor. The floor. The, floor, the bed, sorry. The bed of the machine okay. drops down, and then it comes over, and then it comes back up. Just like it always does yes. in laser. Yes, yes, absolutely. But when your files come, they're all preset to drop. The bed drops maybe a half an inch. That way you're never having that little rubber bar, the focus bar, come over and hit your jig or something like that. Um, so. so do we need to change that then? Yeah, so yes, if you're starting with a brand new file like this, you're going to want to put maybe an inch in or something like that, okay. um, half an inch to be safe, that you're not going to jam the machine. All right, um, over here again is the, the dots per inch, and you have a lot of different options. The more dots per inch, obviously, the more precise it's going to be. Basically, just like a printer, we typically engrave at 600. Um, like all of your standard files are going to be set up at that. Something I found, if you want to, um, like a, some of the maple colored pieces, sometimes they don't 